to a silence and a quietness deep inside father teach us to listen to you o holy spirit of god help us to fix our eyes on jesus no matter what in all things at all times you are our peace jesus you are our righteousness you are our holiness we look to you right now father in christ jesus your son by the power of god the holy spirit open our eyes open our hearts open our minds to be filled with wisdom from above to be filled with faith to be filled with understanding to be filled with the revelation to be filled above all your godly fear in us teach us to be only fearful of you god for the fear of god is joy in our hearts for the fear of god brings faith in our lives for the fear of god brings understanding revelation and wisdom bless us today lead us to commune with you lead us to love you lead us to listen to you and to obey you in all things father bless us bless us with understanding from above let everything of the flesh let everything of the world let everything that showcases us diminish in your presence oh god give us the awareness to forget to forget all pleasures temptations all the things that are so attractive what people think what the world thinks what people in the world do yes all these things doesn't really matter when we come into your presence oh god what matters is what you think of me and what i have to do for you in response that is all that matters father give me the grace the grace of jesus the love of jesus the faith of jesus the long suffering of jesus the patience of jesus because he said you will save your soul with patience yes lord he said in his living word that go through everything patiently and quietly because i am with you yes lord and that is sufficient no no need to worry no need to be anxious no need to be fearful about anything let's look to jesus right now and just tell him you're all i need You're all I need, Lord. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world of the soul will grow strangely dim. Strangely dim. In the light of his glory and in the grace. Light of his glory. Turn our 
thoughts on Jesus. Turn, Turn our thoughts upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful love. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of this world. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim. Grow strangely in the light of His glory and grace. In the light of His glory and grace. Yes, Father, in the light of Jesus, everything fades away. Everything. Everything that dies fades away in the light of Jesus. Only what is eternally alive remains. Only the one who is born from above remains. Only those who have received grace, understanding, revelation will remain. So don't waste your time on things that die away. This is why Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Don't get caught up with the ways and the things of the world because at the most they will be there on your mind and my mind for 50, 60, 70 years as Moses says. But God is eternal and He is the one who should be on our heart and mind. Every relationship will end, every wealth will go, every person has to go, every things will pass away. But only Jesus will remain. And the thing that he does on your heart and mind will remain forever. So look to him this morning and say, Turn my heart towards Jesus, O Holy Spirit of God. Give me love, give me joy, give me peace, give me long suffering, give me that faithfulness, give me that humility, give me that grace to walk in your fear, O Holy Spirit of God. Yoke me with Jesus, O Holy Spirit of God. Let me learn from Him. Let me learn to love Him. Teach me to love Jesus, O Holy Spirit of God. Teach me to love my Father, O Holy Spirit of God. Teach me to love you, O Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's be seated this morning. Let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Verse 5, and this is what Jesus says. And when you pray, prayer is promoted by God. Prayer is possible only because of God. Prayer is led by God himself in us. Because if God doesn't lead us to pray, God doesn't inspire us to pray, God doesn't teach us to pray, we will become babblers. Only babbling words. That is why Jesus said, don't be babblers. Don't use words. Why? Because only God can teach us, show us and reveal to us who he is. And he alone can teach us to pray. Because the Bible says, in our weakness, the Holy Spirit will teach us how to pray. Hallelujah. See, the Holy Spirit will teach. The Holy Spirit will guide. The Holy Spirit will lead us in deeper commune with God the Father and Jesus Christ. Amen. Now when he's teaching about prayer, he's saying, when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. What does hypocrisy mean? Don't pretend. Dikhawa mat karo. That's it. Don't pretend. That is what hypocrisy means. Religious acts. Hypocrisy means trying to show something that you are not. See? Trying to show that you are a man or a woman of prayer, but in private you don't pray. Simple. Making long prayers but not even being aware of what you are saying. See? Concentrating more on what people see, what they think of me, what they feel of me, and feeling self-righteous. Wow! 
so nicely you prayed not wrong but if you deep down don't have god and connect with god then you're connecting with people and that is not prayer praying to impress praying to show others that others think how great i am how spiritual i am how wonderfully i pray what lovely words i use my tone is so good <laughs> doesn't really matter <laughs> does god hear has god led it are you in union with god that is the key amen play praying in public places is not wrong not wrong we are called to pray in the church but when you are praying in the church your attention is god not people so i don't pray to impress people i don't pray and pretend to be religious but i pray purely with my heart and my motives and my whole being is wanting to know and experience god amen prayer is a gift given by god to human beings where we can express where we can tell where we can make request where we can commune where god that is prayer is our response to what god is doing in us and through us amen and prayer is our asking of god god doesn't pray <laughs> jesus showed us as human beings what it means to pray amen what it means to pray no one in the bible it's written god prayed jesus prayed as a human being being god in the likeness of man teaching men how to commune with god amen how to commune with god see and that's why he said when you pray don't show others see jesus's life early in the morning mark 135 read mark 135 Mark one thirty five. Now early in the morning. Now in the morning, yeah. having risen a long while before daylight, yeah, he went out and departed to a solitary place. Yeah, and there he prayed. There he prayed. Prayed. See, he went to a quiet place. There he prayed. Why quiet place? Because there he can be alone with the Father. Amen. He can be alone with the Father. teaching on prayer the devil never likes <laughs> you know what i'm saying because when people learn how to pray then they get free from fear hallelujah they get free from worries they get free from all things so that they can truly know and experience the living god in their spirit amen and uh, that is the see that is the beauty of uh, you know god teaching us how to pray amen in all things at all times so uh, we'll read that verse once again mark chapter 1 verse 35 listen mark chapter 1 verse 35 what does the bible say now in the morning yeah having risen a long while before daylight yeah he went out and departed to a solitary place yeah and there he prayed there he prayed, prayed. again if you see come with me to luke chapter 5 verse 16 luke chapter 5 verse 16 read so he himself often withdrew see jesus himself often withdrew say often withdrew often withdrew often withdrew often withdrew to do what listen he read. often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed can you see early in the morning before everyone got up jesus went out to pray even as busy as he was in the ministry in fact many people came the previous verses many people came to be healed but he often withdrew learning to often withdraw and go and commune and be alone with god amen prayer the problem with israel was they prayed they prayed three times a day but what happened they got into the habit of prayer Sometimes you can get into the habit of prayer. You see, you love to pray. At the thought of prayer, prayer gives me a nice feeling. Yes, but prayer opens heaven for you to listen from heaven. Amen. 
to what God is saying. God responds to prayer. Our God is a prayer answering God. Amen. All people come to pray to him. Why? Because he wants to answer. That's why Elijah said no. I'll pray. You pray. They prayed. For hours. Whole day. And Elijah said God heard you. No. But now when I pray. He will answer prayer. Amen. And fire from heaven came. And that's why the Bible says in James. Elijah was a man like us. But he prayed. Hallelujah. That is what it means. He prayed. That means he knew who his God is. And he was very sure that his God hears his prayer. Amen. That's why Jesus encourages us and says, When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. Just saying things, just pretending self-righteous, always wanting attention to themselves. See, making long prayer, lengthy prayers, only thinking about themselves and being proud at the end of it, ki I prayed. No, that's, that's, not the, that's not the goal of prayer. The goal of prayer is to go to God and want to humble yourself there and place yourself there to commune and in answer to what you are praying, you want God to answer. Hallelujah. Because there is expectation in prayer. There is confidence in prayer. There is a desire for wanting in prayer. Wanting what? More of you God. Amen. See. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Wicked that you are, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will not the heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. In Luke, he'll give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will teach you to pray. The Holy Spirit will equip you to pray. The Holy Spirit will prompt you to pray. The Holy Spirit will prepare your heart to pray. And you know, the tugging comes on your heart. Pray now, pray now. And you're like, no, a little more. <laughs> I'll just finish this program. Pray now. <laughs> See? Temptation is there. Pray now. That's why Jesus took them to the garden of Gethsemane. Correct? And what did he say? Beware you will be tempted. But what must you do? Pray. In temptation, pray. In worry, pray. In sickness, pray. Why? Because you have God who answers prayer. Amen? Who answers prayer. And he is wanting you and me to come into a relationship with him. God told Moses, bring people to me. I want to speak to them. You know what they said? No, 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 no. We don't want to go near God. We are afraid of him. You go, you hear, you tell us. In the New Testament, it's not like that. Amen? We all can say, Father, because of Jesus. Amen? He taught us how to pray. Not like hypocrites, but to call as sons and daughters of God. Amen? See? Because of Jesus, we are adopted. Because of Jesus, we are new creation. Because of Jesus, we can confidently come. So when we pray, now in the New Testament, Father. Amen? See? See? See from where you are starting, from where I am starting. Calling God Father. That's why the love to pray. Amen. That's why the Lord says, come back to that fifth verse of Matthew 6. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. What is the problem? Praying in synagogue is not wrong because even the disciples went to the synagogue to pray. Yeah? But standing in street corners, not wrong. Because Israel as a nation, especially those who felt the need to pray during that time of prayer, 9 in the morning, 12 in the afternoon, and then 3 in the evening. Okay, you're not in the synagogue, but wherever you are, you can stand and quietly pray. The call of prayer. The call of prayer is important. See? Hear, O Israel, Shama. 
Hear, O Israel, love the Lord your God with all. When you hear the call, immediately uh, leave your work, leave everything, leave all things. Even if you are at home, leave all the activities. You have heard the call of God. Amen. It's time to look to God right now. That's why you see Daniel praying three times a day. Even being in Babylon, he opened the windows and his heart was in Jerusalem. That is the spirit of prayer. The spirit of prayer is that I want to commune with God, not pretend to show to man. That is what Jesus is trying to say. Praying in synagogue is not wrong. Even in public place, how, how you pray? You quietly withdraw. And you pray. Not showing others that you are so prayerful. See, then you've got your reward from them. That is what it means. And that's why Jesus says there, see, please see there, yeah? They pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Got me? So, you have already got your reward from others saying, wow, wow. It's not wrong for others to appreciate that you are praying. But what is important? Your motive is very clear. Actually, I want to respond to God's call. Amen? Not show people. But what did the Pharisees do? They wanted to show and impress to people. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 5, 20, For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of God. See? Don't be like them to pretend to show to pray. Pray because you want to pray. See? Pray because you want to pray. Pray because your motives are leading you to pray. Pray because you are now attentive to God. Pray because you are experiencing the presence of God. Pray because you are humbling before God. For God. Amen. So there is no pride. There is no pretense. There is not wanting men's attention. There is no self-righteousness. There is no uh, religious act put on. But there is a genuine, sincere, humble, loving heart that is wanting to commune with God. Amen? Prayer. Prayer. This is personal prayer. Public prayer is different. But this is personal prayer. Where you are wanting more and more of you, Father. More and more of you, Jesus. More and more of you, O Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Come with me to the sixth verse. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Hallelujah. Your father who sees in secret. You're going to the room deep inside. Your whole attitude is you want to commune. You want to be with. You want to express your love. You want to express your gratitude. You want to express your heart. You want to express your mind. You want to ask. You want to speak. So you're not worried about what others think. Because your whole attention is Father. Amen? That is what prayer is. Your attention is only on God the Father. And you're not worried about others. Jesus prayed in public. He took the bread, he took the fish, he said, thank you, Father. He took the cup, he took the bread, he said, thank you, Father. That's different. But see how Jesus prayed. He always went alone. Because he knew what it means to commune with the Father and to be strengthened by the Father, to be blessed by the Father, to be empowered by the Father, and to be equipped with supernatural strength from above. Amen? That is prayer. That is that quiet prayer leading to. That's why the Bible says, come with me to Luke chapter 6. See, Luke chapter 6, verse 12. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Continued? Continued? Alone. Alone. All alone. <laughs> All night prayer. Alone. See? 
all night alone early in the morning often during the day that is what i am saying look at jesus life he is our role model he is our role model we are called to look at him we have to become like him so we need to learn from him every day see set my heart on you jesus remove pretense remove everything that's unclean unholy remove all kind of pretense and acting and wanting people's attention and wanting reward from people wanting people to notice wanting people to say things about me feeling nice when they say things that look very spiritual no no i don't want to that's not my attention my attention is you jesus amen so when you pray he is your attention when you pray the father is your attention amen come with me to luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 verse 18 and it happened as he was alone praying verse 18 please listen and it happened as he was alone praying that his disciples joined him and do you think they are still asking what you are praying or how you are praying no what are they asking and he asked them please see as he is talking to them who do the crowd say that i am they are seeing him praying but you know when do they ask him to pray and teach them to pray in the 11th chapter of luke come with me see luke chapter 11 verse 1 now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him lord teach us to lord teach us to pray can you see chapter 11 verse 1 but before that what do we see very often jesus prayed early in the morning jesus prayed whole night he prayed uh, yeah and and he was always seen praying alone and before that uh, when you come to luke 11 before that in chapter 9 of luke jesus calls whom james peter and john and takes them up to pray if you see come with me luke chapter 9 verse 28 Now it came to pass about eight days after these things that he took Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, his appearance changed. Amen. His appearance changed, and then they saw his glory. See, they saw his glory. What is Jesus trying to teach us? that it is so important to have the right attitude in prayer your whole attitude is that you nothing is distracting me of the world but i want to be alone with god amen see learning to quiet in your not only words but quiet in your mind learning to quiet in your heart your emotions the thoughts that run so much in our minds that's why the bible says no take every thought captive take every thought captive to the feet of jesus christ if you see 2 corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 read 2 corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 please read zavia casting down arguments yeah. and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god yeah bringing every thought into captivity yeah. to the obedience of christ amen amen that is what it means to shut everything out to shut everything out you can be in a room and still be outside <laughs> you can be shut in a room and still be outside are a cricket match is going on say you know many cricket lovers in our church yeah so cricket matches going on lord can you make it a little quick <laughs> can we finish praying faster i'm saying some uh, somebody else will love something else somebody else will love somebody else somebody else will love something else somebody else will be thinking of biryani now sitting here only you will be thinking afternoon i have to go it's time and this brother and sister are taking too much time 
he is preaching she is preaching in telugu the same thing and you know if only we could go out yeah <laughs> anything and everything can you see it would be nice if it would be just english we could have finished fast and gone for breakfast yeah but now you calm down <laughs> yes you calm down i know minds all of us are like that even i how lord can we finish it quick can we finish it quick can't you see i am in a hurry i have to run my life only is running yeah but you are running without me that's why you are weary that's why you are tired that's why you are exhausted that's why you don't have energy early in the morning when you get up you are like this what happened i know you didn't sleep whole night because of work but that is not the reason trust me if god inflames your heart you can be working whole night but yet when you finish the night job early in the morning first thing you'll give your heart to god trust me i i i pray for this in jesus name on your lives i know it's difficult working whole night yeah it's not easy it's not easy but yet what is the first priority before i start my work yeah let me pray and then i get into work and i finish work and i pray lord may i excel may i do well may you get all the glory through my work may you get all the honor through my work and whenever people applaud and exalt and say wow so nice may i always reflect to you in everything i do amen and early in the morning when you finish lord now that my work is over i'm going to sleep help me to sleep amen help me to sleep see prayer nowadays prayer i'm talking about today's life prayer help me to sleep and especially you know lord give me good rest in my mind let me not be disturbed let me not be anxious let me rest well and get up so that i get energized amen pray in all things pray every time pray for this is the will of god for you amen can you see pray and you're consciously making effort in the inside see you're shutting everything out but you're opening your mind you're opening your heart to god and communing with god and you're concentrating on him in prayer amen prayer is concentrating on god but what is prayer for us concentrating always on our problems making request known is already there <laughs> after that there should be peace see we are only concentrating lord this lord this lord this lord this lord this lord this six things which you know i always tell lord marriage <laughs> lord job lord house lord going abroad lord doing <laughs> you know <laughs> getting getting a new car lord that lord this and then prayer is not nothing more then you have to look for new things to pray now upgrade the house lord upgrade the car lord <laughs> upgrade my job lord uh, wife you cannot upgrade once only that's it <laughs> that's what i'm saying everything you want to upgrade <laughs> job was told one only you get and that only afterwards god blessed amen <laughs> god blessed so when you pray your concentration is on god i'm not saying making request is wrong no but please understand it is asking for god and his presence more and more in our life amen and and learning to put everything aside and learning motives see and being genuine and sincere in the inside and bringing myself to god as i am amen and make request yeah but after request is over after you've prayed for these things now you're praying for him set your minds on things about not on the things of the world for you are dead and now you're alive to god in christ jesus prayer that is prayer you are alive to god in christ jesus and now you are a new creation so you are walking in the fullness of god in christ amen 
See, please don't misunderstand me. Praying for requests is not wrong, but that is not the only prayer in the Bible. You and I are praying for more and more of God in our life. Amen? God is at work in us and God is leading us to pray in and through God the Holy Spirit. Amen? That is why the seventh verse of Matthew chapter 6 says, And when you pray, do not use vain repetition. Can you see? Do not use vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. They will be heard for their many? It's not many words. Your father already knows what you need. Amen? If you see in 1 Kings chapter 18, in the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 18, come with me, read. Zavia, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 26. 25 and 26, read. Now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Yeah. Choose one bull for yourselves. Yeah. And prepare it first. Yeah. For you are many. Yeah. And call on the name of your God. Yeah. But put no fire under it. Yeah. So then, so they took the bull which was given them and they prepared it. And called on the name of Baal from morning even till noon saying, O Baal, hear us. Yeah. But there was no voice. Yeah. No one answered. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. Can you see? After you don't get any answer, they're leaping and dancing and going on throughout the day using vain words. And verse 29, please read. And when midday was passed, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Yeah. But there was no voice. There was? No voice. No voice. Then? No one answered. No one paid attention. Ah. No one? No one answered, no one paid attention. Now when Elijah prays, please see, come with me. Read from verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice yeah. that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Now see what he is saying. Lord God of Abraham, yeah. Isaac and Israel, yeah. let it be known this day that you are God in Israel. Ah, who is getting the glory? God. God. See, you are God. Then. And I am your servant. Yeah. And that I have done all these things at your word. Yeah. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. Yeah. That this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Amen. Amen. Can you see? The whole desire of prayer is turning people's heart back to God. Amen? Prayer should be turning our hearts back to God. Otherwise prayer will be just muttering words, empty words, without our heart concentrating on God. And after prayer, please listen. Please listen what I am saying. After prayer, the effects of prayer is seen in our daily life. Amen? How? Our heart is now renewed by God. And people around us say, Wow, you know, I can see the effect of prayer on you. Amen? See? Now that is prayer. Where your father rewards you in? Open. The effect of prayer. See? Your life is so much calmer. You are so much at peace. No matter what happens, you trust God in all things. No matter what happens, you delight in Him. No matter what, you commit your ways to Him and allow God to bring things to pass. Amen? That is the effect of prayer. Turning hearts back to God. And if turning hearts is not back to God, then it is mere words. If nothing has happened in the inside at the end of prayer, if we come out also the same regularly after praying weeks, months and all, then people around us also wonder what we are praying. Because the effect of prayer is not visible. The effect of prayer is that you become the carriers, I become the carrier of God's presence, God's power, God's peace and God is prospering my soul. Amen? And teaching me to walk with Him. And people around also know, wow. Wow. 
Got it? Hearts turning back to God, effect of prayer. Read Zavia. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. Amen. Then? And the wood and the stones and the dust and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw this, what happened? They fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. Ah. The Lord, He is God. Amen? Amen. Pray and God will reward you in open. And who will get the glory? God. That is the whole reason. That people's heart turns back to God and God receives all the glory in and through your life and my life. Amen? That is the effect of prayer. That is the effect of prayer, loving brothers and sisters. Otherwise we will be praying, just saying those words for the sake of saying. See, earlier we did all that, no? Just repeating those same words, words, words. And second is, you know, praying in another way. You know, lying down and praying. I'm prostrating before the Lord and then sleeping there for three hours and getting up. And at the end of it saying, Are kya neend aya, superb, I felt so rested. See? And most of the time we'll be yawning when prayer starts. Otherwise you never yawn when you're watching TV. You never do anything. <laughs> But as soon as prayer starts, I love praying. Effect of prayer. God is rewarding you with sleep. <laughs> is that prayer? See, you're laughing. <laughs> Otherwise, no, no yawning, nothing, full alert, like an owl. But when prayer starts, something happens. See, and you slip correctly <laughs> and you're lying down. <laughs> I mean, just ask yourself, is that prayer? No? And during prayer only, that time only, that all those attention is there on what is there? Biryani will burn. Quick, 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 quick. Biryani will burn. That will... Leave that. Okay, shut that biryani off. Pay attention to God. And we know how all this kind of prayers we did. But God saves and brings us to a loving relationship. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not, see, I'm, look at yourself. It's always to yourself that you have to see. It's not, you know, looking at my past, knowing how I prayed, what I did. Now it's like, no, this is not right, Anthony. Leave. Right now you are sitting in the presence of God. Right now it is He that your heart should desire. So take every thought, everything, O Holy Spirit of God, out of me for this moment and teach me to look to the Father. Teach me to look to Jesus and help me to commune with them. In you and through you, O Holy Spirit of God. Amen? Pray. Pray. And I'm telling you the effect of that prayer will be in your day-to-day -day work also. You will see the Holy Spirit prompting your heart. You will see the Holy Spirit blessing your work. You will see the Holy Spirit leading you quietly, gently in everything that you do. Amen? And regularly you're saying, see, it's an ongoing prayer. It's not fixed to time. It's not fixed to religious activity. It's not fixed to what people think. It's not fixed to show people. It's not. It is God. Amen? That is where your heart is filled with joy every time. See? That's why the Bible says, pray without ceasing. And then what does it say? Give thanks to God in all circumstances for this is the will of God for you. Amen? And you learn to be patient. You learn to be kind. <laughs> you learn to be generous. You learn to, you know, slowly shut your mouth. And you learn to love the way God loves. Amen? That's the fruit. That's the fruit of prayer. Because God is at work. Amen? That is the fruit. That is the blessing that you see. Suddenly peace comes all around. What does the Bible say? God blesses the righteous man with peace even with his enemies around him. God 
it is god who gives peace amen it is god who gives us the grace it is god who gives us and his name is father jesus taught us amen and when we pray we pray in the precious name of jesus hallelujah see ask anything you want from the father you have not asked anything in my name as yet ask and see how he will give it to you amen pray come to the father in christ jesus by the prompting and the working of god the holy spirit in prayer every day amen come with me through the eighth verse of chapter 6 of matthew therefore do not be like them got it do not be like them those who use too many words repetitive words useless vain words but their heart is not with me got me their heart is not with me if you see matthew come with me matthew chapter 15 please see from verse 7 hypocrites well did isaiah prophesy about you saying these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far away from me their heart is their heart is far away their doctrine is teaching of men not god's word amen not god's word it's it's teaching of men they are what men teach that they keep repeating 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 they don't look at my living word amen that sets people free so what is prayer it's the synchronization of the mind of my lips and my heart and i am concentrating becoming aware of god's presence by the work of god the holy spirit in me and the holy spirit is leading me to pray in union see even if i'm worried even if i'm tensed even if i'm fearful even if if, if i feel disgusted tempted what do i do holy spirit help me to pray holy spirit lead me to pray and remove everything that is distracting and disturbing in me and help me to concentrate help me to be attentive help me to be sincere help me to be genuine help me to focus my attention to my father and jesus right now in prayer you are shutting everything out amen there and the holy spirit will help you that is what it means to pray being genuine in prayer it's not magical mindless words that is vain repetition yeah the rituals and you know there that is like it sounds spiritual formulas given 120 times say this 300 times say this read all these names and see no 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 it's your heart god wants your heart no remember skeva sons they came they tried to remove that demon what did they say we come to you in jesus name whom paul preaches <laughs> whom paul preaches what did the demon say jesus i know paul i know you i'll whack <laughs> and they ran naked such a beating they got from the demon that that is the thing that is what you have to understand don't say jesus that paul preaches i come in his name no jesus that i know <laughs> i know him <laughs> he is mine i am his amen don't don't call somebody else's name and say jesus that that pastor knows this person knows that one knows no jesus i know because he is my lord amen say he is mine i have come to know him in a loving relationship and i know my father because of jesus he said if you have seen me you have seen the father i am the way the truth and the life no one can come to the father except through me amen so learn to pray in jesus by the power and work of god the holy spirit and learn to pray to the father amen ask ask god to open your eyes ask god to open your heart ask god to open your mind ask god to you know i would put it like this before praying before praying 
Prepare the ground for prayer. With your living. With your living. The way you live, the way you talk, the way you interact. Deep down start becoming sincere with God. Prepare ground. And when that ground is ready and the Holy Spirit is already prompting, working in you, then He leads you in the inner courts to pray correctly. Amen? In sincerity. And then when you are praying there, you see the fruits. How? When you come out. <laughs> God is like, I am with you, don't worry. I will not, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will help you. And you see, it's a cycle. Feed yourself constantly with God and His Word. Feed yourself with God and His Word throughout the day. And go in to pray. See what happens. Go in to pray. Here I am thinking something, looking at something, desiring something, uh, speaking something, uh, doing whatever I want. And then like, ah, let's pray. How can you be peaceful? How can you even say, let's pray? You know, no, the struggle. Only then you'll use words, big, big words. Oh, thou art creator of heaven and earth, or oh, do, uh, okay. But what are you thinking right now? What are you experiencing right now? See? Why? Because throughout the day you have exposed yourself to all things. But if you... Time and again, expose yourself to the Holy Spirit throughout the day. Then what happens? He is leading you to the throne of grace. Amen. And then you come boldly. And then you pray boldly. And you say, cleanse, heal, deliver. Why do you think the Bible says, come? You see this verse, then you will understand what I am saying. Hebrews, why I am saying this? Come with me to Hebrews. Just see this verse, okay? Okay. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 21. Before that it says, Enter boldly because of the blood of Jesus by a new way which has been concentrated for us. Then go to verse 21. Say we read. And having a high priest over the house of God, yeah. let us draw near with a true heart. Yeah, see, well, true heart then? In full assurance of faith. Yeah. Having our hearts sprinkled yeah. from an evil conscience yeah. and our bodies washed with pure water. Then, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Why? For he who promised is faithful. He is? Faithful. And now see the next verse. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. What is consider one another? Encourage one another. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. See? Build one another in prayer, in love, in good works. Remind them, come on, come on. Keep praying, keep asking, keep walking with God. Encourage one another. Amen? Throughout the day. There. You say, encourage one another to pray. Hey, vanda paan, pray pandit ke poidla. If that's your attitude, then you'll never enjoy prayer. See? Encourage one another to pray. Love one another. Want to do good to one another. Don't forget to keep meeting. Not to talk about somebody's wife and husband in that meeting, but to pray. Not to discuss other people's personal life, but to pray. Not to discuss what is happening in the neighborhood, but to pray. Amen? Otherwise that becomes a discussion center. Feeling so nice, no? Like BBC News, everything has come there. What is happening in the locality? What is happening in somebody's house? What is happening with somebody's children? What is happening with somebody's husband? What is happening? Yeah, 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 so sad. No, come, let's pray for him. That is discussion. You are asking for God to intervene. Then stop gossip. Listen to what I am saying. If truly we want to become men and women of prayer, stop gossip. Stop slandering. Stop talking about people's lives. And be quiet. Even if you see something, just pray in your heart for that person. Amen? Pray. Pray for that family. Pray. Say, Holy Spirit God, I don't know, but I really see they need you. 
come upon them amen see pray regularly pray regularly whenever you get an opportunity bless whenever you get an opportunity do good whenever you get an opportunity love whenever you get an opportunity encourage see you're praying you're praying and your whole purpose is that people turn to god amen throughout the day and then when you go into the throne of grace yourself to pray you think he won't meet you amen he will meet you because he knows your heart hallelujah your heart is wanting more of him and your heart is wanting more of him for others amen see ground work has to be done what you do in 23 hours will affect that one hour <laughs> what you do 23 hours will affect that one hour and that one or two hours will affect again the next 22 23 hours amen so it's like a circle keep going keep going into the presence of god amen and desire for more and more of him by blessing him thanking him and encouraging one another to pray see encouraging building building one another in prayer you know your heart swells with joy yesterday yesterday a little boy called me and he said pastor how do i start reading the bible like this like that and the way he was talking no suddenly my heart was so filled with love for him really i'm telling you and then i uh, you know suddenly i felt lord give me that kind of love once again no amen that baby kind of love how do i start i want to i'm reading i want to understand i want to know i want to learn after few years we stopped that i already know yeah that was i know this story i know bible i read 32 times we stop becoming like children children go to their father regularly amen children run to their father and jump on his lap regularly we have become adults that's the problem <laughs> yeah i know how to handle god only if i need you i'll call you see i can manage on my own are everything i already got so many awards what is that if i don't get award then i'll call you lord award went this year <laughs> please come i pray see <laughs> So what are you praying for? Here's my question. Is it a relationship between a child and a father? That is what I pray that you seek. Amen? That is why you say, Father, 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 shut everything away, Father, and help me to look to you and to Jesus. And to turn my heart regularly towards you. As often as possible throughout the day. That I may remain with you. And I may bring others to you. Amen. 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 Prayer. So choose a place. Choose a quiet place. Choose a time. And put your phone aside. Got me? Choose a quiet place where you can be quiet alone during the day. And choose a time and throw your phone away. Before that, 15 minutes before that and 15 minutes after that. See what happens to your life. Start disciplining yourself for one month like this from today. Tell me if there is Tell me, I challenge you, tell me, I'm telling you, you will see the difference in your spiritual walk with God. Throw that phone away. Shut it. Throw that phone away 15-20 minutes before you can go in to pray. Throw it away. Suppose you choose to pray, say at 8 o'clock in the evening or 9 o'clock in the evening. Yeah, choose a place and tell family members, see I'm going to pray. I want to get, give this time to God. Please, Spare this time. Tell me whatever work is there before that I'll finish. And tell me whatever work is there after that I will do. Amen? Choose. Start with 15 minutes. But 15 minutes before that, throw the phone away. 15-20 minutes, take the word of God. Read for 5-10 minutes and then start praying the word back to God. Amen? And, and be quiet. 
See, learn to be quiet. We have stopped concentrating. We can't concentrate. We tell our children, we have no concentration at all. You only can't sit quietly. What telling child? He or she can't concentrate. First you sit and show for one hour. Then I'll challenge you. The child also will start sitting. <laughs> I'm not joking. We only have lost concentration. We cannot sit for more than five minutes. We get distracted. We keep thinking and then we'll take the phone and then we'll do fiddle and then we'll hear one song and then we'll read something. Then we feel something. See? If I just tell you be quiet now for five minutes, see what happens. And don't just, just be still. You'll be... Yeah, being still is first learning to still in the inside and then learning to still slowly, steadily. But still starts from outside first. Environment. Withdraw. Withdraw. Jesus withdrew often. Jesus went early in the morning. Yeah, try. I'm telling you. Trust me. I have seen people improving immensely. People who have said, but you know, I get up at uh, about uh, 5.30. I said, try getting up at 5. Try getting up at 5 before the family gets up and be quiet. I love, I love to be quiet. I, I'm not exaggerating. I take every opportunity to be quiet and just walk and withdraw and go and sit quietly somewhere. How I enjoy the very presence of understanding that, you know, I can be alone with God. Wow. See, that is my joy. <laughs> I can be alone with God. I'm not exaggerating. I can be alone with God. I love some places. I love some homes. I love to be there. You know why? Because, wow, I can see the whole sky. I can see the, you know, the beauty of nature. And I can just, just how great art thou. Amen? Let your heart be robbed by God often. That's what I call. I call it that. You know, I tell him, I'm not exaggerating. I tell him this, rob my heart often to you. From all these things, you know, all these chiller things of the world, they will constantly. And I tell myself nowadays, everything that dies, no, Anthony, don't pay much attention on it. Only what, whatever is alive, pay attention on it. Amen? Whatever is alive in the eyes of God, pay attention to that. Yeah. Today he read, no? 70 years, 80 years. We are all crossed 50. Enough. Most of us here. Now also. We are like, ah, oh, mm, this, that. Leave. Leave, leave, leave. 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 Submit and surrender things to God every day in prayer. Amen. And tell the Lord, Jesus, rob my heart towards you. Jesus, draw my heart towards you. Jesus, mold my heart in your likeness. Jesus, may my heart and my soul and my mind and my whole body be yours and yours alone. Amen? Ask. Try. How many of you are willing to do it? I don't know. But if you are willing to, trust me. Set a time. Set a place. Before prayer, 15 minutes. Pray. After prayer, 15 minutes. No touching the phone. No contacting anybody. No talking to anybody. Only the living book, the living God, and the living you. Amen? Get in. Get in. Get into that quiet place. And, and, and just say, Lord, only you and me. And nobody else. See what happens to your life. Trust me, see what happens to your life. And you will have great testimonies to give. I'm telling you. You will have great testimonies to give. I can see what God is doing. I know and how I enjoy who he is. And I keep telling him, you know, withdraw my heart, Lord. Withdraw my heart, Lord. I, 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 I just want to be with you. That's all I want. Nothing else matters. And I can see the fruits of that. The fruits of that I can see in my relationship at home. Amen? Because God is at work. You see the blessings. See? You see the way you, you interact. You see the way you look at people. You see the way you talk to people. Everything starts changing. Amen? Moses, more of you. 
without you I will not go. And God takes that Moses and makes him the humblest man. Amen? Humblest man. God makes him humble. God gives him a heart for his people. So much so that he prays, if you want, cut my name away from the book. But do something for them. Amen? There. May our hearts truly become more and more like Jesus. By the power and working of the blood of Jesus Christ, the finished work of the cross, and the power of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen? I pray, I really pray, I really pray today that all of us will take this up for one month. Amen? From today, just one month. See how it is. Don't leave a single day without spending time in prayer. Amen? Alone. Not that group prayer. Group prayer you do. I'm not saying no. Group prayer you do. That's nice. But that group prayer should lead you again to quiet prayer. Amen? See? Quiet alone with God. Alone with God. Just go alone with God. If you don't have testimonies, you tell me. You will only run and come and say, Wow! I can see so many things that the Lord has done. Amen? And may we pray for one another. Hallelujah! May we really pray for one another that we get this time to be alone with God. Amen? Let's pray. And prepare our hearts to come to the throne of grace for the grace and the gift of prayer manamantaram kuda prarthinchukundamu devuni yokka krupa simhasanam yuddhaku manamandaram raavadaniki manam siddhapadadamu prepare your heart as we come to the table of the lord remember today ask ask tell him lord i need i need the gift and the spirit of prayer ask Take time. I need, I need the gift of prayer. I need to learn to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me to pray. Ask. Ask. Help me to pray. Help me to be attentive. Help me to collect myself. Help me to be humble. Help me to come in faith. Help me to be sincere and honest. And help me to experience and know your presence in my life. Ask. And you will receive. Ask. The Father wants to give you an experience of God the Holy Spirit. Ask. Please ask. Like a child ask, please ask. And tell the Father, I want this experience. I want this living with the Holy Spirit and walking with the Holy Spirit by the living word of yours. Because your word brings your spirit in my heart. Every time I read your word, may the Holy Spirit enlighten me. May the Holy Spirit bring your presence, your joy and work through me. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. And the Father will pour His Spirit and of understanding, of revelation, of godly fear, of knowledge, of hidden treasures being given to us. To all those who ask, receive. Ask. Enough of that way of living. Just wasting time, whiling away, doing nothing. Vain talking. Enough, enough, enough. Let it be cut in Jesus' name. The pleasures of life. The wasting of time. Let's gather like what Paul says. Make the best of the time that God has given to you. Redeem it. Make the best of opportunities that God has given to you. Make use of it in prayer. Collect yourself. Gather yourself. Don't be indifferent to the call of God and to the call of prayer as a believer. Father, in the precious name of Jesus we come. We repent of our sin of prayerlessness and false and wrong attitudes. Holy Spirit set our hearts right with the Father and with Jesus. 
help us oh holy spirit of god help us to recognize and to repent immediately for the lack of prayer in our life from today burn our hearts oh holy spirit of god and lead us to pray bless us with your presence reveal treasures of heaven in our hearts yeah we'll sing it prayerfully don't worry about the words i'll call out have thine own way lord have thine own way thou art the potter i am the clay yeah have thine own way lord have thine own way thou art the potter thou art the potter i am the clay i am the clay tell him mold me and make me mold me and make me after thy will after thy will while i am waiting in while i am waiting yielded and still yielded and still sing that once again have thine own way have thy own way lord have thy own way have thy own way thou art the potter i am the clay thou art the potter i am the clay i am the clay tell jesus mold me and make me mold me and make me after thy will after thy will while i am waiting while i am waiting yielded and still yielded and still sing it once again have thy own ways lord have thy own ways lord have thy own ways have thy own ways search me and try me master today search me and try me master today master today whiter than snow lord wash me just now whiter than snow wash me just now wash me just now as in thy presence as in thy presence humbly i bow humbly i bow hold over my absolute being oh god fill me with thy spirit till all can see Christ only always living in me that is our prayer today god that people will see jesus christ living in me not me let the spirit of god blow over us let the holy spirit of god take control of us let the holy spirit of god destroy everything that's unclean and unholy in us and remove far away from us pretense hypocrisy wanting the honor of men trying to please people trying to be attractive to what people think wasting of time longing desiring and caught up with the ways of the world not that we haven't to be in the world but we are to engage god in the world so let the holy spirit of god engage us and bring the presence of jesus through us as a church we ask oh father this day we want to be ready for your time of revival revive us father revive us father enflame us father engulf us father with the holy fire of god the holy spirit burning in our hearts for the love of you father and for the love of jesus as you sent your fire on jerusalem 
that day of Pentecost. Send your fire upon each one of us whenever, wherever we sit and wait on you. We want an experience with you, O Holy Spirit of God, an encounter with you to those who have not received you, those who have not come to a living work of yours on their heart. We pray for them right now in Jesus' name. Become alive, Lord. Teach us to be aware of your presence. And all false worship, all religious activities, and all vain prayer, let it fall, let every vain work fall in Jesus' name. And let all the works of the flesh be destroyed in Jesus' name. Teach us to walk with you, O Holy Spirit of God. Teach us to work with you, O Holy Spirit of God. Teach us to long for you, O Holy Spirit of God. And let Christ be revealed through us. Let he be seen in us. And let his works come through us. Let his word come through us. Let his thoughts come through us. From this day forth. This blessing, let it come on us right now. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, Father. That as we eat and drink of Jesus. And his living word. And the work of the Holy Spirit. Let the desire of our heart to be more and more like him. In everything that we think, speak and do. From this day forth. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Let's eat and drink of the Lord. God, our loving Father, we bless and thank you for Jesus, your beloved Son. We thank you for God, the Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you are doing in us. Help us to carry you more and more every day. Thank you for giving us the grace and ability and insight and strength and faith through your living word. This day onwards, we commit a time and a place for you in our hearts, in our homes, anywhere that we will before we go in to pray, we will take 15-20 minutes to prepare ourselves with you, O Holy Spirit of God. And we'll throw that phone aside and all those activities aside. And then we'll go with you in prayer to the throne of grace, Holy Spirit. And then as we pray, teach us to pray. And as we seek the Father and Jesus and you, come and visit us and let your word and your works come forth from our life. And as we finish prayer, Teach us to thank you, bless you, worship you, love you, to be with you and to long for you to bless our day. Every day, let this become a pattern of our life, Jesus. We stay blessed in the glorious love of the Father of us. We stay blessed in the resurrected and ascended and enthroned Jesus, our Savior. We stay blessed by the power and the glory of God, the Holy Spirit living in us. We carry their blessing to the world around us. From this day forth, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 We stay blessed in Jesus. Amen. Peace be with us. Amen. Mm -hmm.